Well, I think we might be live. Maybe, just maybe. Cheers, guys. Happy Friday. Thought I would take a few moments and hang out with you guys on a Friday night for once. Sorry I didn't get a new video out today. It didn't, uh, it just didn't work out this week. It's been a little crazy. So I thought, ah, next best thing. I'll do a quick live show with you guys on Friday night. Maybe continue on with the UPS repair. Maybe catch up on some chat. I'll just catch up with you guys and yeah, maybe make a night of it. Or at least a short time. Okay, previous video. We were working on this wonderful little unit. This is my UPS that had failed, my backup power system 400 from Noma. And what we did, we took it apart last video and discovered... Well, oh, hold on, I gotta put some gloves on before I handle this. I'll show you what we discovered. It was a mess. Kind of an interesting failure. It wasn't what I expected, actually. It was what other viewers expected, but not I. What we found was one of... Oh, both of the lead-acid batteries were completely destroyed and failed and busted open. And, well, there's the cells inside. There was no acid left, no harm done in the UPS. But these Ritar batteries did their time at well over 10 years old. They eventually just failed. So, so be it. And some of the astute viewers in the chat, when we tore this down and diagnosed it, went online and told me that we could get these batteries fairly cheap. So after the broadcast, I went on Amazon, and sure enough, it is an odd-looking battery to me. I'm not familiar with that form factor, but they were right. Sure enough, there's lots of them available. And these were uh, Amazon Prime uh, one day delivered. Not next day, but one day later. Uh, they're not the same brand. They're a direct replacement, though. Uh, 18 amp hour slash 20 hour. I don't know what that slash 20 hour is. 18 amp hour, supposedly, non-spillable valve regulated lead acid battery. Nothing to it. Um, looks like the same unit to me. I think we should be able to make them work. Maybe, just maybe, these should function. Just going to check. Yep. Things are awfully quiet tonight. Where is everybody? Awfully quiet. So we get some hardware with the batteries. Don't know whether we're going to need that because I already have some. We'll set them aside and we'll bust the UPS back apart and we'll see if they fit. And with any luck, these were a uh, hundred and rate about $120 Canadian for the two of them. So uh, it's enough money. That's a fair chunk of money for two sealed lead acid batteries. But when you think about it, if this UPS is serviceable, that's uh, not such a bad deal. If I can put this back into service and get, well, let's say best case, if we got another 10 plus years out of it, that'd be fantastic for that price. Very reasonable. So I figured I'd take a flyer on it, order the replacements. Definitely cheaper than I can buy a new one of this quality that has proven itself <laughs> under the worst conditions. And it served me very well. So we'll see if we can put this back into service. It'd be fantastic. That'd make me very happy if we can recover this and get it back out there and do its thing. But I think I might do what I had it on before was my reef tank for my my fish, my uh, saltwater reef tank. I think what we'll do this time is use it for uh, the 3D printers because I've never had a UPS on them. I think it would be very nice to do so. Is this come open from the far side? Oops. I had it right the first time. It's just this ends being ornery. It's actually a really nice fitting case. You did a nice job on it. There we go. Back to where we were the other night. I did lose one fastener in the process and I've never been able to locate it. 
yet. I looked all over the shop and I can't find one of the center screws, but it's okay. We'll find a replacement. Set things together. There. So this is the case where the batteries came out of. And down here is where they would have leaked, but didn't, uh, magically. And I think we should be in good shape. It'll be a little careful. This is a 110 volt mains running across the bottom here. It's not obviously not live right now, but I'm gonna make sure we take good care of that. Yeah, this should work. Now, pretty simple layout. Positive, negative, negative, positive. Just two batteries in parallel, nothing to it. Let's grab one of these new ones and see if they fit. It is like super specialty, right? Uh, these cutouts fit into this case and I thought about just using some batteries that I had and well, that didn't work out. So I went with the direct replacements. The batteries that I had would be far, far, far lower capacity and would much rather, oh, like a glove. Look at that. It's a perfect fit. Wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. Okay, let's set the other one in before we start hooking things up. That is wonderful. What have we got? Positive to that side. Terminals are on a little bit more of an angle than the original, but that's the only difference. Ha! Huh. Like a glove. Fantastic. Let's just take a second right now. This There's a little fan down in here that came on right away on charge. There's no, no dust in there at all, but we'll just give it a little blow. Clean it out. Things are really, really clean in here. Surprisingly, considering how many hours this has run and that circulating fan probably runs all the time that the batteries are charging. But yeah, not gonna complain. Wonderful. I think this will do. All right, should we hook it up? We did test that it could charge the other night. So with any luck, this thing should be capable of doing the business. Actually, let's just bring this up. Try not to put too much pressure on the other circuit board. Let's bring both up. Because once we hook one up, all the remainder of the batter, the wires are going to be live. It's got to be a little cognizant of that. The unit, the inverter circuit shouldn't turn on unless we cycle the power on, so that shouldn't be too big of a concern, but try and not zap myself live on air. That would be a good idea. That would be good. Hopefully you guys are in for a fantastic weekend wherever you're watching from. The weekend here is supposed to be quite decent. Tomorrow I think we got some thunderstorms moving through, but not bad for the end of August. Weather is usually a little unsettled here this time of year. We'll take it. Then it's supposed to be back up to 31 Celsius for a few days the beginning of the week, which is nice. That's more summer again. All right, let's do the other negative first, and then we'll do the positives. Just nice little machine screws and nuts here. Lock washer, really, really it's annoying me. This is the way it came assembled. It's wrong. It should not be this way, but this is this washer is actually captive on here. <laughs> it annoys me that the lock washer, it actually should be on the other end, but so be it. Let's do one on one side, one on the other. It's fine. There's no, this thing isn't exposed to vibration other than shipping and I don't intend on shipping it anywhere after this. So we're going to need these to be Basically, yep, that's what I was waiting for. 
you stay over there. Don't touch the positive. Don't touch that positive. Let's do this one first. Yeah, let's do this one first. I'll snug that down in kind of a vertical manner. And, well, might as well. Let's tighten this in, tighten the other negative, and then we'll deal with both positives. And we'll deal with both of those. Like I said, it's only 12 volt DC on any of these circuits until you turn on the inverter circuit, and then all of the outlets will come live at 110, which could give you a pretty significant little lifter if you're not careful. Okay, this is going to make a little spark as the inrush. Oh, nope, it's already done because that first contact we made. Caps are all charged, power supply is all charged up. This other one, it can't touch anything. There's nothing ground on the chassis except for that heat sink up there, so it's pretty safe at this point. But that's not going to flop around and grab anything. The only uh, close ground we got to worry about is this one when we go to tighten it up. Shouldn't be too bad. In theory. Wow. This is obscenely quiet tonight. Where is everybody? Ah, well, such is the nature. YouTube, if you don't have the um, notification bell rung, you won't get notified. And unfortunately, with live shows, it's even particularly bad that people don't get notified of these live streams at all. Unless I schedule them in advance, which I'll go back to doing at some point in the future. Okay. We got that fired in. Take this one, hook up our last one. That should give us two batteries paralleled up, 12 volts a piece. Wonderful. With any luck, if everything is still functional as it was tested the other night, I should have a perfectly good UPS to put. What I think I'll do is I'll put it on, I use the i3 Mega 3D printer the most lately, so it'll probably go and live on that printer right away. But we'll see. I can always swap it back and forth depending on what printer I'm using. The i3 Mega has um, power outage resume functionality, but the, uh, the non-stick print bed um, once it cools off, your print no longer sticks to it. So the, the resume function is completely useless because your print will just pop off if the bed cools. But my CR-10 on the other hand, it could be resumed, but it doesn't have the power off resume function built into it. So easy solution, we'll just add a UPS and then we don't have a problem at all. Did you check your charging voltage? Yeah, I did the other night. It was 13 and a half volts. It charged quite well. 13 and a half on a fully charged battery and then it started cycling between 13 and a half and service charge on the battery, which was perfect what I wanted to see. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Should we try it? We, we could try it. We could try it. I don't think anything's going to blow up now, but actually, let's just get the voltmeter ready. Let's check our surface charge on these batteries. I didn't even see what they came through shipped at. I imagine they're going to come through at somewhere between probably 12 point, oh, let's guess anywhere from 12.3 to 12.6 volts. Let's say that, somewhere in that area. They're both paralleled up now, so we're going to be measuring them both, but... Let's see, 12.9, ooh, lots of charge. 
not a storage charge lead acid you can leave them charged up a lot more like unlike the other batteries where you want to keep them a little bit lower wonderful okay where did the leaked acid go it didn't it evaporated they actually the plates there I'll show you again there is no sign of liquid in the bottom of this at all whatsoever. It didn't leak any acid. It didn't leak any water. If they were completely dead, it would be water, but they weren't. Uh, it completely evaporated and the cells are completely empty, bone dry. And then it proceeded to apparently continue to charge slightly until it split the cells, until these uh, sandwich cells uh, actually broke the case. But nothing leaked out. There's not a single sign. You can have a look here. I can uh, throw the old macro to it, but not one drop, not one bit of corrosion, not one sign of damage, nothing. It was wonderful, which is a fantastic failure mode. <laughs> I was quite happy. Uh, that's why I checked the charging voltage initially was to see whether it had boiled them dry and it, it wasn't the case. It was just age. This is a very, very, very old UPS. Uh, my father gave this to me when I was still living at home uh, and I won't say my age now, but jeez, this, yeah, this thing is, wow, it's way older than what I thought. This is not just older than 10 years. This is older than that by a long stretch. Okay, should we try it? Oh, Julian's here. Cheers, Julian. All right, contact. We got fan spin. Our little 12 volt fan is on. Ooh, good sign. Now, the UPS is still powered off. Nothing is active, so it's it's quite interesting that the fan comes on. Are we charging in this off state? I suspect we are. Look at that. So it charges even with the UPS off, which is a good way to do it. There's no reason you wouldn't want to maintain the batteries while it's off. And the fan comes on to vent any gases that would be off gassing, even though they are... Uh, they're a valve regulated battery, so no matter what, it's a lead acid, it's going to vent. 13.2, that's a pretty good charging voltage. Now, these batteries are a little, like, not fully charged. So what I would expect is this is going to come up significantly more than that and then taper right back off. Uh, actually, not significantly more than that. I would expect to stay around the 13.2 to the 13.4 or 5 range, thereabouts. But... Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Let's see if we show we should show charge and then an indication level of charge, ninety percent. Now again, that's stri strictly like whatever they programmed into the microcontroller for voltage levels, but it shows we're charging, which we are. Shows ninety percent charge, and what do these buttons do? That cycles between the output in watts and they won't cycle back. So I guess we got to have a load on it, which is fine. Let's put a load on it. What have I got? Let's put a little load on it. I got a little USB power bank thingy here with the USB charger. I think this this battery is euchred in this thing, so no matter what, it's going to probably put about a half an amp load on the system. We'll find out. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Eight tenths of an amp. Eight hundred milliamps drawing there, and does that even register up here? No. No, this thing's designed to measure lots of watts, and that doesn't even show. Hmm, need something with more power. Let's put something with some more juice. We'll test out the power supply. Oh, one of those will work. Yeah, one of these will work. Let's, ooh, can I... Oh, here we go. 
all my uh, all my soldering iron stuff is kind of tied up in there. So what we can do is I'll plug in that standard cable, and then up here I have an FX951 soldering station clone. Don't buy it. Check out my review video. If you're looking at buying one of these clones, just simply don't do it. It is a piece of junk, but it's good enough to load test a UPS. I don't know how much it's going to draw without a tip on it, but it might be enough to show up. Nope. Because the piece of... Ah, oh, no, it's not a piece of junk. Can't blame that. It's pissy because I don't have a tip in it. Oh, fine. I'll give you a tip. I'll give you a tip. Just the tip. Can you salvage the lead from the old batteries? Yeah, you probably could. But I would rather just get rid of those far from me. <laughs> Take them to the local recycler and that'll be the end of it. Okay, we got a tip. Contact. It's heating, maybe. It's blinking. There. Now it should heat. Freaking piece of junk. Just heat. There. Now it's set. Holy smokes, I see 40 watts. And I smell a soldering iron getting hot. And it's already hot. <laughs> well, can't knock it too bad. It's instantly up to temperature. So, yeah, we've got a wattage indication. We've got a hot iron. Now, actually, let's leave that on. And we'll just let it keep beeping at me. And I'm going to pull the UPS from the wall and see what happens. We're drawing 90 watts there now. UPS is on battery supply. The LED has come on. That's an indication that we're on battery. The iron is still running, showing 380. We should hopefully cycle. Oh, come on. I think I just broke my. I think I just broke my camera mount. That's battery level. Come on, iron. I need to hit you with some solder and draw a little current. It's warmed right up. It's not drawing anything. Let's see what I have here. It's kind of a conflagration to accomplish here. Hit it with some, some solder. Come on now. Well, our watt meter is meh, not responding. But the iron is working just fine and is powered up. We're just simply not drawing enough because the iron's up to temperature. If I shut that off for a minute, let's shut it off for a minute and let it cool off. We're still on batteries on the UPS, even though these batteries aren't fully charged. Uh, we're still on. I actually like this UPS for this function too. It's kind of neat. This uh, face is out from behind your desk is kind of the idea. It's for powering your computer and anytime when the power is out, this blue LED on lets you sort of walk around the room without stumbling on things. It's kind of a neat little function. I used it when the tornado hit town here seven years ago, I think. Seven years ago yesterday or the day before. It was really, really handy. I used this to power a lot of things. It was fantastic. Ken asks, were you able to find the exact replacement batteries? Yeah, at the beginning of the show I went over it. These were identical replacements right off of Amazon, shipped to my door, uh, day after next delivery. And uh, it worked fantastic. They're, they're a perfect, wonderful fit. We'll let that cool off for a second. These are the original. Ritar ones, and you can see these are completely identical in every way, including the molding up here. It just dropped right in. It fits right into the molded case. They are a perfect, perfect fit. These are designed to, to be there, or the case is designed for them to be there. Fantastic. Okay, now what happens? That iron should be cool. We're on watts display. Power it up. We should suck some watts. Show me the watts. Or are you going to complain that you're not turned on? No. Oh, I missed it. Was there a flash? Yeah. <laughs> Flashing is 60. Not the most reliable watt display. And then the iron's up to temp. That was the beep. So 
we're working we're running the iron off of it no problem it's working perfect that is tickety boo and if i charge plug this back in I find the right cord the light should turn off and we should go back on the mains actually here before we do that what are we at for battery voltage where are we at right now these batteries weren't charged beyond what they came shipped so we're still at 12.89 fantastic and then I'll leave that can I set that there we go where's my cord and then we should go to somewhere around 13.2 to 13.5 right away and as we start coming up fantastic light goes out beeps at me starts charging we have a fully serviceable ups unit again cost two lead acid batteries from amazon at the cost of around 120 canadian pesos which is uh, enough but i cannot replace this ups for 120 canadian pesos no way we have 40 amp hours of capacity here which is wonderful uh i don't see any reason that this shouldn't do pretty good uh, especially with the 3d printers it'll be good for that or i can put it back on one of my pcs most of my pcs i'm not too concerned about honestly uh i should be i guess more but i don't have that many power outages here and it seems that pcs don't seem to get damaged as much as they used to for uh uncontrolled shutdowns whereas my 3d prints if i'm doing like a 60 hour print well that's going to make me upset if that gets destroyed and this could prevent that so yeah very cool um i've repaired a few ups's off and the caps are also on the way out yeah that's totally what i expected actually that was the first thing i expected uh, on this unit um let's power it down off and off i took a look now i didn't put my esr meter on them just due to the sheer runtime of this that that is entirely what i expected that would have been failed and it's it's gonna be tough i got a flashing light where's my flashing light my kingdom for a non-dead flashlight apparently i don't have one wonderful here Let's try this. Will that do? A little bit. You can see the caps down in there. Main filter caps. No bulgy bulgy. Everything in here actually seems amazing for the amount of time on it. What blows me away is the sheer lack of dust and crud. Mind you, I had this in my bedroom for a lot of years, but I had it below my bar in my basement for the past five years, six years. And I would have expected... Uh, some dust intrusion, and I really would have expected. I uh, can't get it where you can see this other filter cap, and then there's another cap there. None of them are showing any signs of bulging. With the sheer amount of hours on this, I really expected there to be some. There's another one down in here. Sorry, I really need a my flashlight. Focus, focus. Wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. You're not gonna anyway no bulge no bulge on the top so either we got lucky and there's just no fish oil caps in this thing or we just got plain lucky i have no idea the for a power supply to be on that long that continuous duty i've never even had a computer power supply last that long not even close without fail caps so that's what i expected to be failed but in this case it was not it was not at all so yeah we're in good shape Julian's off chairs, the batteries acted big caps, you don't lose any AC components. Yeah, that's not always the case though. The the caps on the power supply are still uh still gonna dry out to some degree, but yeah, I'm sure it could have an effect. Uh, yeah, Def Pumps got them on the go. 
I see what you mean. Primary in the regulation. Blah, 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 blah. Good stuff. He is the cap's worst enemy. Yes, it is. Ken, that is what kills them. In fact, that's the most wonderful thing about cap failure. Um, uh, quick and dirty secret. If anybody doesn't have an ESR meter or you don't have visible damage on your caps, if you're troubleshooting... Okay, let's just go with an example. LCD monitors. LCD monitors, they'll fail. They almost always fail after a power outage or a power disruption. And that is because they've had time to cool off. When they're hot, they will still function far beyond when they are down to room temperature or cold. So even if you don't have an ESR tester, if there's no sign of failure and you have a dead consumer electronics component that you suspect is bad caps, because it's always bad caps, you can take this wonderful tool over here or a similar one, a heat gun, and you can warm them up nice and gentle. Don't melt anything, don't get crazy, but just warm them up to say 30C or so. And if your component starts working, there you go. You'll know that it's those caps. It's always the caps. But uh, yeah, heat is the worst enemy. It's why they dry out and why they fail. But it's also a neat little diagnostic tool if you weren't already familiar, which a lot of people here I'm sure are. But that's my tasty tidbit of the Friday night. Good old heat gun and you can diagnose caps, but if you don't, uh, if you want to do it the right way, just get yourself a cheap ESR meter. These things cost nothing and it, it works easy. You can get one of these, but this I love because it has a, a tweezer set up. You just to discharge the caps and put it on and check them out and it's almost always electrolytic caps and when i made the joke about fish oil earlier i wasn't kidding uh, a lot of the caps that well even good production ones the oil in them the electrolytic was actually uh, fish oil and some of the cheap ones was bad fish oil believe it or not you can google that ap tech is here cheers ap tech all right. What do you think we can think we can get this? Actually, hold on. When you're live streaming, you tend to gloss over the details, like the fact that I missed that it was the batteries entirely when I took this apart. Let's make sure that our mains wires are tucked in nice. What you can do is just take a, a little dollop of hot glue and settle things into place. You could solder up some of these absolutely spectacular joints on these main <laughs> mains connections but uh, they've been in service just fine and we're gonna leave them I think everything is how we want it and with any luck we can set this back together with any luck come on you can do it Uh, these you hold up something right in the center holding up the works it's right around the screw hole in the center okay so the wires underneath sorry I have to do this off camera I have no choice the wires in the middle have to be sort of manhandled to get out of the way and there we go we have a case. Fantastic. I am really happy about this. I love being able to service components and put them back into service, especially when it's a pleasant surprise of how simple it was. The fact that the that the power supply and inverter circuit and battery charge circuit was untouched by this damage and even the case was untouched by a complete battery split just blew my mind nothing nothing <laughs> ever goes that easy in the lab here no, not ever it's ridiculous so eh, it's nice to win one now and again but Honestly, I see no reason that this shouldn't be able to go back into service for another 10 years. And even if we do, I, I would be amazed if those caps last that long. But if they don't, you saw how easy that is to service in there, how easily accessible it is. It, it's not hard. It's something we can fix. So if they fail, so be it. I'll fix them. Would a same voltage, different amp hour battery do something else than lengthen and shorten the run life? Nope. 
Hugi, it would just lengthen or shorten the run life. That's it. In fact, this is what I was planning on doing. I was putting these in. I have an entire case of these Panasonic. These are, notice the size difference, much, much smaller. It's perfectly serviceable. This is designed for a UPS, large industrial UPSs. And what I was hoping to do was put four of them in it vertically because I already had these. They wouldn't fit. So what I could have done is just put two horizontally, but our capacity would be much, much, much lower. I actually don't know the amp hour rating on these. It's not ter not it's certainly not 20 amp hour like these. So I would put them at seven or eight, I think. Maybe a little maybe uh, yeah, maybe ten at the most. So, but we could have just set two of them in and had a perfectly serviceable UPS as well with just these batteries and they're a good quality battery, it would have worked. As long as you're using 12 point, standard 12 volt lead acid. Uh, how, long ago, how long ago was your circuit test videos? I'm not sure which one you mean. I recently released a project for leakage and breakdown voltage tester and generate up to 500 volt DC. Very cool. DIY in the ghetto, cheers. Batteries don't seem to last very long these days. Yeah, they don't. Those look like 12 amp hour. Yeah, I don't think they're even that. I think they're less than 10. Seven. Yeah, I think you're right, Ken. I, I think it's quite possible that they're seven amp hour. Here you go. Well, you guys with the Google Foo. Here you go. Screenshot. There's standard Panasonic. It's only the last digits that matter. The 1232P2. 1232P2. You'll find it. It's a standard industrial UPS battery. I think you'll find there are around seven or eight amp hour. Experimented with super caps. Nope. Uh, those big batteries cost twice as much as those small ones, and exactly the reason for asking. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why I didn't want to purchase them. Uh, but uh, like, it's a lot of money. That was one hundred and twenty dollars. That's a lot of cash, and it's not something I wanted to put out right now because I just had a dead UPS. I didn't really need it to be back up and rocking but I decided rather than use those small ones it would be better to spend the money now and have the large capacity fully serviceable UPS for potentially another 10 years so I actually lost one of the fasteners taking this apart I'll be darned if I can find it I've turned the shop inside out wherever it took off to you guys know what I'm talking about that I don't know how some fasteners can just tour off to different distant lands and I swear I, I have no idea how they can hide so deep under a workbench or in such a strange place. There we go. That one will do. That one should do. So of course, like every hobbyist, I've got bins and bins of screws. Actually, we'll talk about these after. Bins and bins of that kind of stuff, and now oh, I lost my screwdriver. Jeez. Come on now. My only oddball size will actually, this will work for this one. This one's got both. This will work for the center one, but I need my other one back for the side one. There it is found you find it you and with any luck when we're done this thing is still gonna power on <laughs> it should I don't have a lot of concerns I, I can tell you I trust this piece of equipment a lot more than just about anything else in a long time because of that failure mode and the fact that it didn't burn my house down it didn't do anything stupid I I like it I like trusted equipment power on on battery light is on wonderful is that anything higher load we could put a little bit of a stress test on this I got that's handy. I don't think I have anything super handy. Nah, I think we're just gonna have to make do with that. The fact that it works is good enough. And battery level shows 100 now. <laughs> battery meters aren't exactly the best, but love it. Power on, power off. 
wonderful. Love it. <laughs> Thanks again. It's the engineered ninjas borrowing a screw. Uh, is that where they go? I thought it was like little garden gnomes that sneak into my workshop. The workshop gnomes. Gnomes. I have no idea. Electronic components are even worse than socks. <laughs> I like that one. It is. This is true. Okay. We got a couple fasteners to go in the bottom yet. These are neat. These are like automotive uh, push clips in the bottom of it. Took me a while to figure this out on the first live stream consumer electronics is always an adventure the first time you take it apart but these have just got these split push clips just like you would find in an automotive interior i don't need the silly gloves on anymore i guess i didn't need the gloves on the whole time now since i was handling the battery these just push in in theory if i can get them back in if we can get the holes aligned just right They were tight coming out too. There. And then we put the center in and it should spread and hold that bottom together. Slick. Very cool. I kind of like stuff like this versus the silly internal clips. I hate the internal clips a lot more. Like LCD monitor bezels. Oh, those are a pain. You always think you're going to shatter the thing trying to get it apart. This one's a little more snug. This one's a lot more snug. Oh, that's tight. What it'll do? There, just like so. Just like QC passed. Somebody got a UL sticker? I'll put my own. There's one right there, but. A CE sticker. Yeah, that's what we need. CE sticker. Should we put the Noma stickers right back on? Are they still usable? Betcha they are. I took these off fairly carefully with my razor blade. Cutting the fastener underneath. And we can put it right back the way it was. Almost like it was meant to be. Watch, I probably put that one on upside down. <laughs> I didn't even look. That's what happens when you're working upside down. Carl is here. Cheers, Carl. Snap on tools. <laughs> yeah, AP Tech. Uh, if you didn't already know, uh, my former life was an automotive technician for 10 plus years. So I have mucho, mucho dinero of snap on and Mac tools. These are snap on tools. Nobody in their right mind would buy these outside of being a mechanic. No one in their right mind would ever purchase snap-on micro screwdrivers, ever, unless you're a mechanic. Because we were the only ones silly enough to do it. But we did depend on them every day. Your tools are your livelihood. And when you have a broken tool, well, it's a bad day. So you pay. You guys want a joke? Go, just go Google how much these are worth. Honestly, you, you'll be sick. It's absolutely insane. Or a ratcheting screwdriver. It's, it'll make you ill. So much so I carry an insurance ride around my house just for the tools still sitting in my garage that I don't use anymore. One more time, we're gonna say, we're gonna say we win, boys. I think we won. We have a serviceable UPS that we can take out to the studio. I would do that right now, but unfortunately I can't travel with you guys. So if you got anything, any questions or comments, throw them in the chat and I'll catch up with you guys right now before we call it a night and just have a little social time. I don't think we can, I don't think I'll start another project right now. Let me look around the lab though while we do that, while we catch up for a couple minutes. I'll take a quick look and see whether we've got any other quick projects we can do. Could I feature you on my website? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Hmm. I was going to say, I've been uh, going hog wild at the dollar store. My lab has been a mess for far too long. So I've been 
buying up these clear containers like mad and I'm getting them it's three bucks for three of these these ones these ones are three bucks a piece now in Canada these containers are freaking expensive no matter what you do but uh, this is the most reasonable I found and I'm just loving it I've got the majority of the workshop kind of organized here uh, nothing that the camera can reach sorry I'll have to show it on a weekly video, but uh, I've been just non-stop organization. Everything from all my capacitors, all my electrolytics and tantalums that have just been floating around the lab for so long, finally have a home. And what I do is I take my label maker that I've had for years. Thankfully, you can still buy labels for this. And I label them all just like this on my drawers and do encoders and whatever so i'm just kind of on an organization kick that's uh that's why the lack of the video this week i've been just trying to catch up on so much in the lab because i've been so behind and i don't know whether you guys have it but when the lab's a real mess and disorganized it gets kind of depressing it's hard to make videos about tech stuff if you're not comfortable in the lab so it was time to just take a time out as well as some components came in. Do you guys want a sneak peek? I'll show you. <laughs> IT Freely is off. Cheers. <laughs> Jay Leno called Snap-on Prada for men. It's, it's, it's true, except, except uh, it's, yeah, mm, I disagree with him. These aren't bought for form. These are bought for function. These tips on these, like, you can put this through a war and it's pretty hard to mushroom the tip or wear it out. And if you do, the guy shows up at the door once a week, you put it on the counter and he gives you another one. It's not, yeah, Prada is more uh, form than function. So I don't agree with Jay Leno there, but uh, I get the concept and like stuff like these. These are my semi-deep snap-on sockets. Oh, he wants something sick? Google the price of these. They're even worse. These little, these little semi-deep sets. Again, snappy. You can't even buy those off the shelf. I don't think there's any manufacturer that makes a thin wall like that in a semi-deep quarter-inch drive. And they are bloody, absolutely essential to doing uh, interior work, like doing heater cores and dash stuff in cars. And if you don't have it, well, you quite simply can't do the job, which means you don't get paid. <laughs> anyway, sneak peek. You guys want to see something cool? I'm going to show you something cool. Check this out. You guys are going to see a video on this soon. But for now, you guys are the first to see it unless you follow me on Instagram. I got a new toy for the first time. I have a true binocular microscope. This arrived the other day from AliExpress. Uh, I'll be doing a full review on it and I will be posting the links, but if you're uh, interested, you can just go to Strange Parts YouTube channel and this is the one he recommends right out of Singapore. Uh, sold out of Shenzhen, but now shipped out of Singapore because uh, he put them on, he just put them on the map for good reason. This thing is fantastic. It has an HDMI video camera up here comes with it. This is $349 US uh, for the entire unit. And I think it's a lot of money, but uh, pretty hard to buy anything this good for that price. It is absolutely for a true binocular microscope with the camera through uh, that you don't have to disrupt or switch between them or anything. Uh, 4.5 zoom, I forget what the zoom on these with the the eyelets are, but basically I can see, like, I can solder 0402 stuff, no problem now, other than if my hands would work, but absolutely wonderful. I've been exper experimenting with this for a couple of nights, and I can tell you my review is going to be 100% positive unless something changes. It just works, and I'm not going to show it live here tonight. But I've got the HDMI hooked up to a capture card on the computer, so now I can bring you far better stuff than what I was doing previously is this microscope, which is my USB one on the desk here. And that works fine for live stream stuff. It's 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which is meh, whatever, but so be it. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. The other one might be 4 by 3 too. 
it doesn't matter but uh not nearly as zoom and a lot of latency you can't solder under it because there's simply not enough room and too much latency but good enough that was that was good enough for the time being but now we're moving on to bigger and better things it's much much better ab text is nice yeah <laughs> Play up, scotty yeah it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome uh i'm looking forward to this because now i can live stream uh board level repairs like okay this is this has got 0402 components on it and 0603 stuff and looking at this under that microscope it's, I've never seen anything like it. It's incredible. It's a whole different world. Uh, it's totally serviceable. You can read the numbers on the components, on the passives. Uh, there's no reason I can't work on consumer stuff now other than the limitations of my skill and my hand movement and my dexterity and, well, skill mainly. So, uh, hey, I'm willing to give it a try. With the right tools, we can do anything. It is a big investment. It is 350 bucks. It's a lot of money. But it is not a lot of money for the value that this brings. I would put this at well over a thousand dollar microscope. Yeah, truthfully, like the Amtec ones, I think are very good. I think I've never worked with one of those, but I'm pretty sure this is better. Yeah, just just love it. I couldn't be happier, guys. Looking forward to uh, bringing you some fun stuff with that, and yeah, lots of other fun projects. I've been working on the robot as well. Uh, the big robot that everybody asks about all the time. Some more parts for that came in. I got a new webcam showed up so now I can hook up the Raspberry Pi and do some computer vision on it. The charger for the lead acid batteries that is going to be in that big rover is here. It's just a cheap smart fast charger but I wanted something that was built into the robot that I can just plug into the wall. Is that I don't like messing around with charge cords and stuff. I want to be able to just code on it. and It'll be like a Mars rover project essentially so i'll be able to send it remote commands and stuff and should be fun and a whole bunch of mailbag arrived this week tons and tons and tons of mailbag uh more mailbag than i can shake a stick at but those are coming i have one in the pipeline and then another one to to video there and i'm going to continue with some of the the small tutorials coming up the uh, the next one I think I'm going to do the like same day project builds. I'm not sure whether you guys enjoyed those, the one a day videos I was doing. The next one, I'm going to rehash my Nokia 5110 video because this is still one of my favorite displays to use, just durability and visibility wise. And I'm going to do a quick little video on that and then I'm going to substitute this out because I found a new one, the same size that's a full color display and I have those inbound. So we'll transition from that video into the next one. I think it should be fun. Let me know what you guys think. What, no solar charging? <laughs> yeah, in the future for the robot. When I convert it or do another one for outdoors, then we'll do solar. Isn't that Julian's thing? Yeah, that's Julian likes the solar stuff. I would like to as well. So if you guys aren't familiar, it's a, a kid's ride-on toy that I'm converting over to a uh, robot project just as a, a simulated Mars rover. And the idea that I wanted to do was to, to build it and insulate it uh, so that I could put it outside and have it truck around year round. And I can, the problem is, is here the weather is quite bad in the winter. So I have to have heating systems and stuff on board to keep the batteries from freezing. And I decided I'm just going to do an indoor one first and then I'll flip it over and do an outdoor one once I get an idea of what what systems I want on board and whatnot. It, it's more or less like it's uh, the subsystems expand so bad. Like Andreas, his video with his robot, like everybody wants everything on board. Well, I do too. You have to limit it because power is limited. We don't have a radioactive generator. We don't have a thermonuclear generator on board. So uh, yeah, once I get all that figured out, I think I'll go to an outdoor one. Um, how do people not open things? Yeah, I well, you'll notice in my videos that I do open things. I don't wait for the mailbag. I open them up, see what they are, uh, just so I know what has come in because I have a, every 
day I have stuff from months ago coming in from eBay. So I check on it and then I just do the video. It's honestly, I forget what has come in generally. So, um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's like, I'm seeing it for the first time with you guys most of the time. So now our spare hardware into the bin. Perfect. I think I'm going to call it a night guys. Yeah, great seeing you too, AP Tech. Are you going to have the drill holes in the lawn to do soil testing? Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Probably just do simulated science. We'll see. You never know. All right, guys. I'm glad you guys could join me. It was great hanging out with you guys. You got an amazing bunch. Click a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it or if you like doing this kind of stuff. I truly appreciate it. And I truly appreciate hanging out with you guys. Amazing, amazing group of people follow this channel. I'm, I'm really happy to know you guys and get to hang out with you. So it was good to see you guys. Have a good night. Cheers.